It gives the age of Moses. It gives all of these different things. Moses was 80 years old when he got the people out of the land. You see, you can take these dates, and if there's a date in there, then you can use it. It's, there's not a mistake, and it's not like something is missing. And if you want that ever to read that thing, I think I have it posted on my website, Dwelling in Egypt. And it tells all of these names and all of these dates, and it also will tell you, remember it said, they will be strangers in a foreign land for 400 years, and then it says, and they will be oppressed and afflicted, um, uh, and I will bring them back to this land in the fourth generation. Okay, just because they're strangers in a foreign land doesn't mean Egypt, it also includes Canaan. Okay, have a great day there, Mary. But the fourth generation will tell you that it's not just, the foreign land is both Canaan and Egypt, but the, the generations will tell you how many years they were out of the land of Egypt. Okay, so they're out of the land of Egypt for, oh, bye, Lil, have a nice day. Okay, or nice night. 430 years. Well, they weren't in Egypt 430 years. They were, that's what I'm saying. Is back in Egypt. No. No. No, we, no it's, it, it, the problem is, if you look, there's probably a footnote, and if there's not a footnote in that Bible, somebody, read that verse, and somebody go to the NIV. What, what, does anybody here have the NIV? Okay. Go to the NIV, tell her what verse you're reading. What, what verse are you reading? Commentary. Okay, commentary is wrong. Yeah. That's why I don't read commentaries. The commentary is wrong. Okay, what we want to do is we're, we're going to have to go back. Uh, because you brought this up, because you brought this up, I want people to see it. So we're going to go to Exodus, and it's probably 13. How about 1240? It might be 1242. It's right in that area. Let's see here, 1240. Okay, go ahead. Somebody read Exodus 1240. Now, a sojourn of the children of Israel who lived in Egypt was 430 years. Okay. It sounds like it's 430 years, doesn't it? But they said sojourn. Okay. Well, not just that. Okay. This is why I say it's so important to read different versions and to always read the footnotes. Forget the commentaries. Read the footnotes. What does the footnote in the NIV say? Well, She's got it right there. Footnote for 1240. Submit the Masoretic text. That's the Masoretic text. That, that Samaritan Pentateuch. Right. And Egypt and Okay, now wait a minute. We're gonna we're gonna do this first. Masoretic text says 430 years. Okay? Then we have the Sep Samaritan Pentateuch. We have the Septuagint, which is LXX meaning 70. Okay, and then what else? Uh, Egypt and Canaan. Oh, those two say in Egypt and Canaan. Okay? That's what that says. These are different texts that are saying different things. Okay, now we need to go to the New Testament, Galatians. And we might as well get this done. We did this once before, maybe, back at the time of Abraham. But Okay, go to Galatians. I think it's four. I may be wrong on that, but... 3.17. Let's see what it says. 3.17. 3, it says, okay, well, that's promise of the seed. Okay, and this I say, that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ. Okay? 430 years, right? From when? Right, go to the previous verse, verse 16. Spoken to Abraham and to his seed. The scripture does not say and to seeds. But to seed, singular, speaking of Jesus. Means okay. People. But who who is the who is he speaking about? The promise was made to Abraham? Christ. Right? But and the promise. Go back, person. go back. Who is he speaking about? Abraham, right? Yes. The promise was made to Abraham. And then in verse 17, he tells what the promise was. Four hundred year thirty years later came the law. So from Abraham to the law was 430 years. Okay? Now, there's a problem. We have in the Masoretic text, which is dates to about 1030 A.D. Okay? This is the text that the King James Version is based on. 
and the New King James Version. Okay? That's it. There are other texts which predate this. We have the Samaritan Pentateuch, which goes way, way back. I don't know what. We'll say 300 AD. I have no idea. Okay? It's much older than the Masoretic text, the oldest copy we have of the Masoretic text. Okay? And then we have the LXX, which is the Septuagint. That predates Christ. That goes about 250 years before Jesus. Okay? So we'll say 250 BC. Okay? They say, in that particular verse, Egypt and Canaan. Right? In other words, the time, the 430 years, wasn't just in Egypt. It was in Egypt and Canaan. Okay? So, does anybody here have the King James Version? We've got one here somewhere. I'll read. They, they did a really neat thing with the King James Version because they already understood this problem. Yeah, let me check here. We got one right here. This is a uh, NIV... New King James. Ah, King James. Okay, and that was, what was it, 1240? Here's what it says in 1240, Exodus 1240. Now, the King James Version, they, they, these were really scholarly people, okay? Who has the New King James Version? Read the New King James Version, Exodus 1240. Whoever gets there first, just read it. Was there any commas in that sentence? Um, no. Oh. I read, I read it like there was, but... Yeah. yeah, that's because you already know what the answer is. There's no commas in there. Right. You can read that any way you want, but listen to this. Now, this is the King James Version. Now the sojourning, S-O-U-J-O-U-R-N-I-N, the sojourning of the children of Israel, of the children oops, of Israel... Guess what they put here? They put a comma. Okay. And then it says here 1240. Oh, I'm so, yeah. Who dwelt in Egypt, comma, was 430 years. Makes a gigantic difference because they knew that they weren't in Egypt 430 years. Well, grammatically, that's what the way you would write it anyway. You know, talk about English grammar. You right. Would, you would put a comma and a comma. Right. Well, if you're making the point that they dwelt in some place other than Egypt as well. If not, then you're going to translate it the way the New right. King James right. Version did. You're just going to say, now the dwelling, sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. But the, New King, the, the King James Version people knew that it wasn't 430 years in Egypt. And so they said, who dwelt in Egypt? They offset that. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel was 430 years. Take this out. Sojourning from when? From the time of Abraham to the time of the law. 430 years. But they also dwelt in Egypt during part of that time. You see the difference? They were smart enough to know that this isn't correct. They had all of the other lesser texts. They had this. They had this. And they knew that it wasn't correct, but they didn't want to change God's word, so they just simply offset this. The New King James Version didn't. And as I said, if you go to my website, Dwelling in Egypt, you will see all of the dates, the date that you just brought up, all of the ages of these people. Who went to, who went to Egypt? What, which person? Which, the oldest person to go to Egypt was who? Abraham. No. It was Jacob. Well, he went there, but I'm talking about... It was Israel. Remember, Israel went down there as an old man, and his sons were already down there, or his sons came with them. Joseph was there, but the first person to go dwell in Egypt was Israel. And then who came out of Egypt? The youngest person to come out of Egypt. Benjamin. No, no, no. That's one generation, Benjamin and the 12 sons. What generation? Oh, generation. Put it this way. Does Moses have children at this time? Well, from us, yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we're going to see this in others as well. We're going to have Gershom and Merari. Okay? We, so the next generation after Moses is the generation that's coming out. And this is all bared out in the Bible. In other words, you have Israel went in there, and then after him you had his son Levi. Mm -hmm. Levi? Okay. Levi, not Levi's. That's genes. Okay. <laughs> You have Israel, and then you have Levi, and then you have Levi's son, who is um, uh, Amram, uh, Amram, Amram, and then you have his son Moses. 
Okay, Moses is the deliverer. He came out four generations, and the fifth generation is Moses' son and all those children that came out. He says they will dwell four generations in a foreign land. It doesn't say they're going to be 430 years in a foreign land. They're going to be four generations. I will bring them out in the fourth generation. Okay, so this is the fourth generation that is being brought out. So we know this, and if you take these ages of... Isaac and of Jacob and all of these people and you count it up, it comes up to 430 years from Abraham to the law. Now, here's a question. Why would the Masoretic text say 430 years in Egypt? It's the same reason the Masoretic text is wrong in other areas. Oh, because they're trying to deny Christ. They're trying to deny a principle. Christ in this one, I don't know, but they're trying. Yes, as a matter of fact, that is it. Why? If they say it's 430 years, what does that do with the timeline up to Jesus? Right. It, it makes everything fall in line. Everything moves yeah. back a couple hundred years. Guess what year they say it is from Anamundi right now. Anamundi meaning from creation. What is this year right now in Israel? It's the year 5771. And on 18 September, I think, is it 18 September? Yes, 18 September, Rosh Hashanah, it will be the year 5772, according to them. Well, you get rid of a couple hundred years, that's about where you're going to be, right? Guess what year it really is about? About. We're very close. Nobody knows exactly. About the year 6,000. And as I said, and I've said this before, the menorah is a picture of the work of Christ. The middle candle is called the shamash. Shamash means servant. Jesus came at the year 4,000. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, here comes Jesus. And then you have... 2,000 more years, and then you have the millennial reign of Christ, the last thousand years, okay? He's a servant. He lights up the world, okay? Do you see what's going on here? They are denying these things, and they have hidden in the Masoretic text a certain number of years in order to make a guy named Bar Kokhba the Messiah of Israel. He came about 200 years later. He went back into Israel, and you can watch him on... Uh, Discovery or PBS or something, they, they'll, they'll talk about Bar Kokhba. And they say, he was the deliverer. He was the Messiah. Well, of course he wasn't. But that's what they can do. They can say that it's him. And all these other prophecies like Bethlehem and all that, oh, they don't matter. This guy came and he delivered the people of Israel. He started these wars kind of like the Maccabees beforehand. Well, afterward, come, look up Bar Kokhba and just do a study on him. And people will say, well, yeah, he was the deliverer about the year 6,000 or, or 4,000 or whatever. They can do that. Because they have finagled dates, they've hidden certain dates in the Old Testament. Who but it's these people, the Masoretes. The Masoretes were the people that took the Hebrew Bible, and Israel is scattered around the world. Their culture is being lost. Everything is being lost. And so what they did is the Masorite. Masorite means counter to count. And so what they did is they said, "We are going to preserve these words of God. We know this is the word of God." And so. When you see, here, let me show you. When you see the Bible like this, you see this here? See that? That looks like printing, doesn't it? Yeah. That's not. That's all handwritten. Uh -huh. See how beautiful it is? Uh -huh. Unbelievable. What they do is they handwrite, and then what they would do is they would take, they would count every single letter of each book. And if it was off by one letter, they'd throw the whole thing away. All of that work. They would throw the whole book of Leviticus away and they'd start again. Or they would, and they knew the number of every single verse and everything in the Bible. They counted everything to make sure that they were preserving God's word. But there are times in the Bible, and I brought these up before, but we're on it. We might as well go ahead and do it. Go to the 22nd Psalm. Yes. Isn't this the way that God has used to keep them blinded? Probably. Absolutely. Plus they have the Talmud. They've got the, that's right, but they will see. They will see. But as I said, blindness is, goes both ways. Do you guys got to go? Yeah. All right. Have a great day. All right. We'll see you later. Blindness goes both ways because we thought the Jews were out and we replaced Israel. So we have been blinded as well. Isn't that right? The church has thought that for 2,000 years. So, I mean, blindness isn't just a one-way street. We're looking through the same opaque glass, and they think they're right, and we think we're right. Now we're beginning to see the Jews are coming to Christ, and we're seeing that they belong in Christ. Okay, so. Can I ask you a question? Yes. I, I, I'm missing the dates under the uh, Septuagint. The Septuagint is about 250 B.C. I'm sorry, I forgot a zero there. This one I don't know. I'm just guessing 380. I, I'd have to do a study. 